Pastor Tim Garino to the program. Tim, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> uh, hey, thanks for having me. And uh, appreciate you guys and everything that uh, you guys do for the mission. And there's a lot going on right now at the mission. We're, we're blessed. And uh, we are going to, um, we're about 100,000 short of reaching our goal for uh, 604 Project Haven House. But we're opening the doors next Wednesday, November 1st. We have all our staff in place. We're doing training. And that project is finally going to be a reality here real soon. And we're excited. We're excited. And um, so November 1st, we'll be receiving, we'll start receiving families. And I know it will fill up fast. And we are very thankful to you guys for helping promote this. And it's a, it's a blessing. Also, Berkeley Springs, our women's facility up there, we're still in the process of hiring staff. We want to try to get that open by November 1st. Uh, there we need uh, two more uh, female shelter attendants, and we need uh, lots more female volunteers to cover all the hours. And then we'll be able to open that up. Where Our goal is open November 1st, but if we don't get all the staff and the volunteers in time, we're going to have to put that off until we get that. But that's a nine-bed facility for ladies up in Berkeley Springs. It, the facilities is all ready. We're excited. So a lot going on, and also at the main rescue mission. We're hopping. We're always hopping at the main rescue mission. Come on down. Uh, it, 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 it's just, it's John, Jonathan, uh, Botwell came the yes. other day and he helped us out and he came with his insurance group. He helped our folks out. He helped a lot of them with the Medicare, the stuff like that. And, um, what a blessing him. And I think it was Michelle came and they met, we had, a, we had all the guys come into the chapel. They met with them and they really, uh, see, that's the neat thing that we, we connect people with, um, all the different groups. And then he helped a lot of our men. Uh, with their Medicare and all the mm -hmm. all the stuff that goes in that stuff, he, he's and, very knowledgeable. Oh yes, he is. And and our guys, when he left, all the, all our guys came to me and said, you know, thanks, Pastor Tim. He really helped me. He he helped me do this. He helped. It's just so many things positive came out of that. And um, he was impressed with all that we did. We gave him a tour of everything, and he realized how big we were and all the stuff that we did. And he got to see a lot. And in fact, he came back a couple times extra one-on-one -on -one with some of the guys and met with them so uh, shout out to him and thank you for that and um uh, i mean and matt's down there a lot he knows our guys and uh loves on them and has a great time mm -hmm. it, it we have a lot going on uh we're, we're over eighty thousand meals for the year so far we've been feeding a lot of families a lot of people are coming in the numbers have went up since that snap thing and i was listening to your program the other day joe ferretti was on yes and he made a great he, he gave you some great statistics about West Virginia, well, not great for statistics for West Virginia, but the foster care system. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he did say, and I just want to echo what Joe said, and, and, and you, you said something too, it was really good. The front end, this money that's coming from the drugs and uh, all that stuff, the front end, uh, we don't give enough money for prevention. We don't give enough money in the front end. And Joe was talking about that ever since the SNAP program changed man our numbers are like shoom, skyrocketed i mean families elderly we feed the community and like from the 15th on our numbers skyrocket the line is almost out the door almost every meal so and that's a good thing uh, well it's it's a good thing for us i mean we're feeding a lot of people right but it's not a good thing for the people because they're short and mm -hmm. so well go, be, before the changes in the law what were they doing well they had the extra snap and it was helping them uh extend their 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 food budget to that, the end of the month. That was the, I think, the extra money from COVID. Right, uh, and, was, and, and and Joe mentioned yeah. Yeah. in his statement, he mentioned this, and I'm, I'm not, I hope I'm not misquoting him, but uh, he mentioned a statement, you know, that we need to start giving some money in the front end, I'm not all of it just dumping it in the back end. It's like the cliff theory. You know, we put the mattress at the bottom, and that's where we put every all our resources instead of putting a fence at the top. So, you know, uh, I, I want to echo what he said and hope the people who are in charge of this money, the distribution, we don't get any of it. So I'm not in the game. I mean, we don't get any of this government money. We don't apply for any. But I see the results, and I work with agencies, and I work with groups, and I work with people who need that money and need that money up front so they don't fall over the cliff. So, And um, I, I just want to echo what he said and just hope pe the people in charge are listening. I know Matt Harvey's in charge of something like that and stuff like that, and he, he has good ear, and he's – 
has his ear yes. to the ground of what's going on. He was a governor appointee yeah. to the board that ultimately will decide how that money is distributed and then spent. And and, and, and some of that money, like it going to the Community Foundation, Michael Walton, um, one of the things the Community Foundation does, and I hope they put some of that money to the Community Foundation, is, you know, they, they invest it, and then they have it for years to come. You know, a lot of these organizations get this lump sum money, and it's spent in six months. Where with the Community Foundation, if they dump some of that money in there, they have money then for years to come to give out to many, many different groups through the interest that it gains, through the investments they make. So, I mean, that's something I hope Matt looks into with, with Mike Walton because Mike Walton, he oversees a lot of funds for the community and blesses the community year after year after year after year. So that, I mean, just coming from that, and again, I don't get any of this money, so I'm not advocating for the mission. We don't take government fund funding, but I'm just saying these are these areas that are really helping and helping people, uh, you know, from falling over the cliff. Um, we're at the bottom, but we're also trying to get at the top. We have some neat things going on at the mission. Um, I, I want to point out before you move on to that, the, yeah. the reason why you don't take government money is because the work that you do is also spiritual. Right. The overall healing of a person yes. uh, begins with spirit, and yeah. if you take government money, you cannot uh, introduce that. Right, and, and thank you for doing that, Rob. I appreciate really? it. You keep me on track, brother. Thank you. And the Steelers won this week, man. Yeah, baby, there it I'm is. I'm telling you, man, I was watching that game. Come on. Good week, baby. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it, and it, as Rob said, I mean, and again, we're not better than anybody. We're not We're not arrogant. That's just who we are. We're, we're, the, we're, we're a religious organization. We uh, The gospel is, is our main purpose, sharing Jesus Christ with people, making disciples for Christ. Does everybody become a disciple? No. But they walk away with if not if they don't walk away become a disciple of Christ they walk away with good moral values and a good value of work and living again i had a guy just recently he's probably been with us about a year and a half he came to us in a very bad situation um he works in our warehouse now he come up to me the other day and he and he's a very quiet guy hard worker walked over to me and said hey pastor tim i he said i never got a chance to thank you and i said thank you th what are you thanking me for he said, well, when I came here, I was miserable. I hated the world. I hated myself. He burned all his bridges. Uh, he's, he's an alcoholic. He really struggles hard. And he said, I've now been clean and sober a year and a half, he said. And he said, I don't cuss like I used to cuss. And I said, well, that's good, <laughs> said, especially since you work in the warehouse and you, you, you work with about 200 customers a day. Yeah. And he goes, no, I realized that I, my cussing was because I was angry with myself. So when I would speak... I would take that anger and project it on others. And he goes, I realize now that I was doing more damage to myself because people then looked, viewed me as somebody hateful, you know, angry. He said, now I have some joy. He goes, I laugh. He goes, I even have fun with the customers. And, in, and he's, he, he didn't say he was a Christian. He didn't say he accepted Christ. But his life is changing. And he's seeing on the inside, like you're talking about, the spiritual part, that you know he was angry at himself but he was projecting that on the world and so i see that a lot at the mission with the guys and now we're going to have um families coming in going to have women in the shelter so that ministry is going to continue because of the generosity of this community and i want to thank the, ge the generosity of this community i want to thank all the people that it, it 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 that help us this radio station we're blessed and we do need help uh donation if you can go online and donate to the martinsburg university mission.com hit that donation button and because our meals are, are going, I mean, we're serving about 9,200 meals a month or more. And so that every, every penny helps. $5 donation, $10 donation. You got a question? I got a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on 90,000 meals, is that 90, do you shop for those groceries? Or, no. Or are, no. Is that, That's a big is cart. It, well, not you personally, but, but are, is the food largely donated? Yeah, it's all donated. Okay. It comes in, and whatever comes in, we make meals. Our guys are very creative, <laughs> and again, it's our guys that do the cooking. Okay. Uh, we're a working mission. Nobody at our mission, anybody that lives there, works. And we have people with all kinds of disabilities. I get it all the time. Well, this person has a disability. 99.9% of the guys in there have disabilities, and we... We go by what their disability is, and then we assign them to where that works about is according to their disability. 
our guys can cook. We have some mm-hmm. of the best cooks, man. I'm telling you, some of the and 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 I'm telling you, you know, people go in and think, oh, it's the mission. They go in and man, this guy made some barbecue chicken the other day. Oh, oh wow! I mean, that's why I've gained 25 pounds. That that <laughs> barbecue chicken. I mean, that was some of the best chicken I've had, and I've been around some good chicken places. And um, I mean, our guys are very creative. We get all kinds of fruits, vegetables, uh, meat. We get everything donated to us, and they make meals. And our our, our uh, guy that runs the kitchen now, uh, Richard, food service guy, he just got his uh, Safe Serve certification through Blue uh, Blue Ridge. So we do we do a lot of that. A lot of our guys, we have three guys now to have their Safe Serve certification. Um, he, he, Richard's going to go and uh, he's going to take a class. It's called at Blue Ridge. It's called What Do You Do with the Leftovers After Thanksgiving? It's a, a cl- it's a cook one day cooking class. So we're sending them over there because we get a lot of stuff. I bet you do. And so we, we we're create we're creative. That's one one of our values that we teach is stewardship because we don't get government money. We depend on donations. So we want to be good stewards with everything we get. And uh, we can be very creative. You ought to see some of the stuff we make. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Miller. And it's good. Yeah. I, I've, I've been there and, yeah. and uh, actually helped in the kitchen once oh, or yeah. twice. And uh, it's it's fun, yeah. you know, to be in there and, and work with the guys and, and see again, you know, what, okay, uh, how do we take this uh, salad that's been sent by a local grocery store and, and go, all right, this is the good part. Get rid of this. Now how do we dice slice and make this into something? So your meals are open. Open to literally everybody. anybody. That's right. Everybody. Everybody. As long as you're not coming in violent. You come in violent, and we haven't had any situation like that in years. You come in violent, we call the police. Uh, you can be as violent as you want with them out the door. Um, but no, we, no. And, and you know, we sit down, mm-hmm. our tables are already set. Mm-hmm. We serve. We do all those things. Like, we want to treat them with respect and dignity when people come in because you, ca- you can't lift somebody up from the ground if you're constantly putting them down. And you, you know, we we pray before our meals. We ask the people to be uh, to be conscious of their cussing because of women and children in the facility. And you'd be shocked how many times, um, like I'll walk through, or one of our staff will walk through, and somebody might be using vulgarity, and they'll see me, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, sorry, pastor, and all of a sudden it goes down. It's that consciousness, you know. And see if you. It's like football. You're a football coach. Yeah, every time, every time one of those teenage boys uh, utters the F word, it's 10 push-ups. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. They see me, they go, oh, sorry, coach. Yeah. They hit the deck. <laughs> and you have expectations. You have expectations. And see, it isn't amazing, as he just said, Rob just said, football and sports. We set expectations on the people that were, that were training. Why can't we do that with people uh, that, that are homeless? Why can't we set expectations? You can. You can. And, it's, and actually, when you do that, you put value in a person. You put value in a person when you set expectations. The mentality is, oh, they're poor, they're homeless, they're helpless. Oh, they, we got to do everything for them. That's that's such a. <laughs> That's, that's you almost you almost cut. <laughs> no. I, 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 so I, I had to make him do ten pushups. <laughs> that's just that's just. So, I mean, and that's and that's why like with sports, like you're talking about, you're getting young minds, and you're and you're telling them that ex, the more expectations you put on someone, they'll reach it. And in fact, mm-hmm. when they can't, then that's when you come alongside them, like we do at the mission, and we help them get there. Yeah. Okay. But come on. There. I'm going to guess. Mm-hmm. There's a significant population within the homeless population, the, 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 these unfortunate folks, mm-hmm. they don't want to have expectations. They want, I mean, is that true? They want, yeah, they, they want they to don't. live in a tent and shoot drugs and... Yeah, they don't. That's why they have homeless camps. That's why you see tents on the sidewalks and that's why you see all this other stuff. But see, then again, it's the people that are feeding that mentality. I don't feed that mentality. That's called toxic charity. When you feed that mentality, I mean, would you do that to an animal? No, you wouldn't, okay? But we do it to human beings. And but and then I well you're a, you're a pastor you're a Christian no the Bible doesn't tell me to give to somebody to to what kills them no the Bible tells me to lift that person up and 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 that whole that 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 is so misquoted that is so taken out of context it's not even funny and yeah the poor will always be with us and that, and you're right that's going to happen but that's a fa- that's a small minority but if you treat that small minority like that you will attract others like it does, like you see in the West Coast. Mm-hmm. And I lived on the West Coast for 15 years, okay? I've seen all that happen. It attracts and builds a bigger magnet because then people go, well, if they don't have to do it, I don't have to do it. But anytime you set expectations, you'll see people come through. Lenny, 
I mean, when you want to test, you want a testimony about somebody. I wish he could really talk. Lenny, Matt, and his wife have been working with Lenny for now almost two years. Um, I went into one of the homeless camps and brought Lenny and, and his uh, nephew Matthew out of the homeless camp behind. It used to be behind the Coast Guard, and they were abused in ways that I'm not even going to get into. Okay, and um, I eventually met Matt and Dale, his wife, and they come in and they t Lenny. When you met, he could hardly talk. You could already understand what he was saying. Uh, now he he speaks. He's learning things. He's um, learning more sign language because he's deaf and he has uh, um, what the word would be. I'm old school dumb. He can't mm -hmm. speak well. Now he can actually speak, and you can understand words he's saying. He and because he has there's expectations we set on his behavior is one of the he's one of the hardest workers mm -hmm. in thing. <laughs> Ask anybody who comes into our warehouse if they know Lenny. They love Lenny. They come out. They hug him. He comes over to him. He talks to him. He signs to him. He never did that when we first met him. When, when I p pulled him in, nobody could understand what he was saying. Nobody, and he didn't even know how to sign well. He does all that now because of expectations, and people are ministering to him like Matt and Dale. And, and his uh, nephew, we put him in, in another state, which I can't mention, and I talked to the social worker from time to time. He is 100% better. He's doing things that he wasn't doing before. Again, expectations. But he was in one of those camps. And he was being, and they both were being abused in ways that, I, I, it just. So you you mentioned going into a camp. How often does that happen, as opposed to you're there, and when someone maybe hits that moment in time in their own mind where they say, "Look, I can't do this anymore," they come to you. Uh, Ninety percent of them come to us. Only less than ten percent that I would go into the camp and get somebody. And that's usually at, that I know there's serious abuse going on, or I know. That um, like in Lenny's situation, mm -hmm. they were being taken advantage of. They didn't know any better, and we go in and rescue them and bring them out. Okay. Pastor Tim Greeno, our guest from the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission. Now down to four minutes. You have some things you need to cover, sir. Yes, and and one of the neat things we're going to be doing here, and we're going to try to team up with some churches and some local organizations. Um, we're, we we want to as the mission, we give back and we want to do community service. We we're, we're going to work with the city on some um, local homes, uh, homeowners that have some uh, homes that are, uh, and they don't have the money to fix them up and do some things. So we're going to do like a home improvement thing, like, you know, on TV. <laughs> so we're looking at a date here coming up in November, possibly the first uh, fr weekend in, in December. And we got a, 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 a home that um, uh, we're working with the city on, and we're going to go in and we're going to do some home improvement. It's going to cost us around sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars to raise to, for the supplies to do the home improvement on. We're going to that's going to come out soon on our Facebook page and on our website. And if you want to join us in this doing this, uh, we're going to call it, we're going to call it Love Martinsburg and uh, mission giving back and working together with other churches and 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 individuals you don't even have to belong to a church come on out veterans come on out help us out uh follow us on facebook and the website that date's going to go up here real soon we're going to have a, a point where you can give money to it because our goal is to raise about two grand so we can go in there and make these improvements on this home this homeowner doesn't have the money to do it they are um, um low income um in in, in a dire situation and we're going to go in and uh give back to the community and we hope we can do this at least three four maybe five times a year and if we be able to do three or four or five homes in martinsburg a year hey that's only gonna make the city better and it's our way of giving back we're gonna have nine of our guys going in and we want to team up with some others it is a lot of physical labor painting taking down some carpentry some roofing uh so a whole bunch of stuff so uh, follow us on our Facebook page. The, uh, more information is going to come up on that. Please join us. Come on out. You don't have to belong to a church or organization. Come out as an individual. When is that again, Tim? That's going to happen probably uh, either before Thanksgiving or the, the 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 weekend after Thanksgiving, which would be the first weekend in December. I I haven't nailed down the dates yet because I have to get some other materials taken care of. Okay. But look out for it. We're going to we're going to advertise it. We're going to blitz everybody, get it out there cuz we want to have probably 20 people show up and hope to knock this out in a day or two and it's done and improve the improve the home. And it's, it's and it's giving back and it's improving our community cuz hey, we want to keep people in their homes. We want to keep them in their homes. I don't want to continue to to fill up the rescue mission. We want to keep people in their homes. So help us out. Follow us. Uh, contact me for more information. My information is on the uh, Facebook page and also on their website. And thank you guys and and uh, really appreciate it. And I hope possibility I might be going back 
to the Ukraine in June. I'm putting something together, and if that happens, uh, please let us I'll, know. I'll let you guys know, and uh, I'll give you a call from over there again. Now, before you go to the to the Ukraine, we're about a month away from Thanksgiving. It's yes. uh, oh yeah, a month from yesterday. So, uh, what do you got going on? Well, we got a lot going on. We got and, and what do you need? Uh, well, again, to go, out, we need it all: turkeys, the whole fixings. Uh, we need tea, uh, sugar, coffee. Uh, you can go to our website; it has the, it has their menu. Uh, the newsletter is coming out soon. It has the menu of Thanksgiving. All the stuff we need: canned goods, uh, rolls, pumpkin, a lot of pies. All, and what kind of pies? Any pie you want to give us, we'll eat it. <laughs> we eat it all. We eat it all: salads, fruits, vegetables. Uh, our Thanksgiving meal is on Thanksgiving Day. We serve three meals a day. So when everybody does that one meal, we still serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Come on out, volunteer. Uh, we need volunteers, especially up at the Hope House in Berkeley Springs. I need female volunteers up there. It's a women's shelter, so men do not apply. We need a female, <laughs> female shelter attendants up there. And but, they'll serve meals and things up there as well? Um, well, we don't have a kitchen up there. Okay. The, meal, the meal's got to come in. So we, okay. we're, we need volunteers to bring meals into us, and it's about... 12 to 14 meals that we'll be bringing in every breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. So, And they can go on our website for that, too, to get sign up and do that. There's a lot going on. I'll tell you what, um, I, <laughs> I, 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 I got stung by a bee with my arms swelled up. I've been at the VA uh, three times in less than seven days, and I'm on steroids right now. <laughs> I got stung so bad. This <laughs> swelling went down. They, they, they. Uh, I feel like t Tim the Tool Man. I walk into the ER and they're like, "You're back." <laughs> we just saw you yesterday. And I look at my arm. They're like, "Whoa!" And um, a lot of things have been going on, and uh, it, it's it's great. It's exciting. Um, and the neat thing is to see people get clean and sober and lives be changed. And the 604 project and the Berkeley Spring project, that's a miracle in itself coming together. I mean, we raised. 1.5 now it's going to be 1.6 million dollars and i mean that's the only animal out there like that there is and i'm praying that other organizations even governor they do that and give people housing transitional housing to move them along to permanent housing and um i mean this community is amazing and what you guys do here and um I, again, Jonathan Botwell came out with Michelle. It was great. It was great to see him and walking around. You could see his eyes lighting up and all the neat things. Because when people come into mission, and Matt can tell you, they don't. It's bigger than 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 you can imagine. And there's and it's a busy, busy place. There's there's things going on. So many things going on. Uh, Breast Cancer Day for uh, um, the Good Samaritan Free Health Clinic is uh, this week or next week. I think it is. They think it's this week. It's having that dressing up for mm -hmm. breast cancer. We gave them the whole facility for the day. The women are coming in. Uh, Good Samaritan Free Health Clinic is doing uh, breast, can breast, breast cancer re uh, screening. How about that? Mm -hmm. I better be careful what I say. <laughs> screening. And uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, the two Karens, the nurses, and uh, um, the doctors are going to be there. So we work with everybody. And we, we welcome anybody to come. Come and get a tour. Love to give you guys tours. All right. Hey, uh, how do people get in touch with you, Tim, go to, and to make a donation? Go to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission dot com website. Hit the button donate today. My phone number's on there. Uh, I get phone calls. Trust me, I get phone calls <laughs> all day, all night long. And God bless y'all. You like what question, brother? No, I'm good. Okay, okay. <laughs> he he always has that face. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you guys, and and thank you, Rob, um, for letting him be part of the show. Hey. I'm going to send you out with your theme song here, the home improvement theme song. <laughs> <laughs>